Welcome to Revival Time Hub, the fire shall ever be burning upon the altar, it shall never go out. And I welcome everyone to the great possibilities we have in God. I pray that today, as we look at the Word of God together, your life will turn around for the better. Those things you have found impossible from this morning, they become possible in Jesus' name. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this hour. Thank you for this moment. Thank you for your goodness and thank you for your power. Thank you for your love and mercy and grace for everyone. We're asking, Lord, you open our hearts, our ears, our mind, our spirit to the word you are sending to each of us. And we pray that this word we do a transforming work in every life in Jesus' name. Amen. Do wonders in every life. Amen. The mountain we ought to remove. By faith this morning, they will go from every life. Amen. From every professional. Amen. From every minister. Amen. And we pray that what you do today will not be temporary. It will be permanent in every life. Yeah. We well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. Another amen before you sit down. Yeah. God bless you. You can sit down. As you know, the theme of our crusade as well as the minister's conference, and the God of all possibilities. And as you think of your life, and think of your calling, think of your ministry, think of your profession, and think of where the Lord has called you, and what he has called you to, you want to understand that the God of all possibilities who has called you is able to make impossibles possible in your life and he will do it we're taking a text from mark chapter 9 from verse 23 mark chapter 9 verse 23 jesus said unto him if thou canst believe that means if you can believe all things are possible to him that believeth. And then in verse 24, and straightway, immediately, the father of the child cried out, Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. The Lord is revealing to us that we believe the word but then there is an area of our lives that has unbelief and the man said sincerely and honestly you have told me lord jesus that if i can only believe all things literally all things are possible for me if I believe, when I believe, and the man replied, Lord, I believe. He didn't stop there. He said, Hell, thou mine unbelief. How is it? Somebody can have faith, and yet there can be unbelief at the background one. I believe as I see you. I believe your power. When I feel the pain, unbelief creeps in. In our lives, we see that God is powerful. And then what lives with us, what we live with, the pain of our problem makes us to have unbelief, wanting to crush wanting to crouch out, wanting to destroy the faith we have. Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. 
22. When I look at the promise of God, the promise of God covers everything in life, everything in ministry, everything in profession. And when I look at the promise of God, which cannot fail, as I look at that and that alone, Lord, I believe then my problems grows bigger and I look at my problem and when I take away my eyes from the promise and I look at the problem I have unbelief Lord I believe help thou mine unbelief in life we know that there is God and it's the God of all possibilities. What has he not done? He created the whole universe. He created us. He has the power. It's the God of all possibilities. But then when I look at man, I brought my child to the nine disciples that did not go to the Mount of Transfiguration. And I still recollect the preach. They cried, they shouted, they commanded, they decreed, nothing happened. And that is still fresh in my mind. When I look at the failure of men, and I look at the impossibilities of men, unbelief wants to creep into my heart. When I look at you, and I know that at the beginning, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God and by him all things were created when I look at God the creator Lord I believe when I remember the failure of the nine disciples help thou mine unbelief the man was saying if I were to look at scripture alone and I see the scriptures and everything the Lord has provided for me in the scriptures and I see the power and I see the greatness, and I see the wonders of the Almighty God. Lord, I believe. But when I look at superstition, a boy like this, a problem like this, once your child has a problem like this, Satan is so powerful. And when I think of that superstition, I have unbelief. Lord, help my unbelief. When I think about the scriptures, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And when I look at that one, the mighty one, the great one, the almighty that lives in me, Lord, I believe. And then when I look at that one in the world who disturbs the whole world, who deceives the whole world, who destroys the whole world, I have a belief. Lord, help my unbelief. When I look at the invisible, for we look not at things that are seen, but things which are not seen, because the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. When I look at the invisible, like Moses walked and lived as if he saw the invisible, the man did not see Pharaoh, the man did not see those magicians. Yes, he saw them, he didn't think of them. When I think of the invisible, the Almighty God who cannot fail in any situation, Lord, I believe. When I think of how determined Pharaoh is, Nebuchadnezzar is, and when I see the fury on their faces, and I see their action, unbelief tries to come in. Lord, I believe, help thou mine unbelief. And that's why we're here to start way today. We're going to clear the ground. All that unbelief, what we look at, what we think of, what we listen to, how we feel in our body, how we feel in our ministry, and we think on the one hand, yes, Lord, I believe. That's how I got saved, because I believe 
I am saved. And yet, apart from that salvation, in all the other things that happen in life, I look at this, I look at that, I look at all those disturbances, I look at history, I look at those who have come before me. Unbelief wants to creep in. We are going to kill that unbelief. We are going to destroy, snuff out of your life that unbelief. And then we we'll say, Lord, I believe, full stop. And your miracle will come. And the power will come. And the authority we have from heaven will come upon your life in Jesus' name. I'm talking to you today on the uncountable possibilities of faith in God. When you can say, I believe, whatever the challenge, whatever the problem, whatever my calling, whatever my ministry, whatever my profession, I don't look on that other side. I look at the positive side. I look at the side of the goodness and the grace and the glory of God. And I only say, Lord, I believe something will turn around in your life. The uncountable possibilities of faith in God. Three things we're looking at as I look at this passage. Number one, the wonderful possibilities of possessors of unwavering faith. Unwavering faith. The faith that stands there and the faith that claims and the faith that says, this is mine and nothing will take it out of your hand. Number two, the withering Posity, a eh, posity that the poverty of people with unreasonable unbelief. Unbelief is unreasonable. Man, Christ is before you. And he says, if you can only believe, all things are possible. He was born by a miracle, by a virgin. He lived a life of miracles. His ministry was a ministry of miracles. His utterances, his word, his declaration, his decree, his authority was all of miracle. Every step he took, every word he spoke, every one he taught produced miracle. Young man, if such a man, the son of man, the Son of God is before you. You cannot say beyond Lord, I believe. If he's Lord, the Lord of heaven and earth, Lord, I believe. If he's Lord, the Lord of angels and men, Lord, I believe. If he is Lord, the Lord of the kingdom, of the kingdom on earth, the kingdom on in eternity, Lord, I believe. If he is Lord of spirits and Satan and sickness, if he is Lord, all you can say is, Lord, I believe. Cut off the other side, help mine unbelief. Looking at the face of Jesus, looking at the glory of Jesus, looking at the power of Jesus, all we can say is, Lord, I believe. There's no unbelief, it will not dwell in your heart. And so, unbelief is unreasonable. He who made manufactured aeroplane, you need a bicycle. He manufactured aeroplane, and then you want a bicycle. How can you have unbelief? He that feeds the whole people, all the people in the whole nation, and he fed them 40 years with manna from heaven. How can you have unbelief for a single meal? Unbelief is unreasonable. He who opened the eyes of the blind and look at that man from Gadara that was cutting himself. The Lord said, how many, how many evil spirits are there? He said, we're legions. And Jesus said, in one word, come out. 
And that legion came out. How can you with a boy having uh, that deaf and dumb spirit say, Lord, help my unbelief. Unbelief is unreasonable. He who walked on water. And then he came. When there is a storm, he only said, peace, but still, that was final. Every word he speaks in your life today, final in Jesus' name. Unbelief is unreasonable. Number three, the glorious gospel of Jesus for all freedom seekers. You'll get what you are seeking after. I said you'll get what you are seeking after. Number one now, number one is the wonderful uh, possibilities of possessors of unwavering faith possibilities possibilities in your life i said possibilities in your life don't ever think of the negative of the impossible of the dark hours of the difficult situation think on the side of god because with god all things are Tell me, tell me. All things are possible. And as we consider the wonderful possibilities for possessors of unwavering faith, look at Matthew chapter 17, verse 20. And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief, they were asking, why couldn't we deal with the problem? Why couldn't we handle that? Why couldn't we chase out those difficult, defiant demons? And the, and the Lord answered and said, Because of your unbelief, for verily I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say, Unto this mountain, remove hands to yonder place. Have you ever spoken to your mountain? No. You speak about your mountain. You speak about your problem. You speak about your difficulties. You speak about all that you are going through. Don't speak about the mountain. Speak to the mountain. And today, that mountain will move out of your family. The more we speak about, about, about the mountain, the more the mountain will be growing in our mind, in our sight, in our understanding, in our spirit. The more we will tell this brother, tell that sister, tell that family, tell this person, and the more we send texts out, I want you to know I have a mountain, and the mountain is getting bigger every time. You are right, because the, the moment you talk about, about, about the mountain, that mountain will be expanding. But when you change and turn around, and say, Mountain, I've been talking about you. I want to talk to you. This morning, you'll talk to that mountain. Yeah. And you, what, what do I tell the mountain? Tell the mountain what Jesus would have told the mountain if Jesus were here. Tell the mountain what Jesus would have told that mountain if Jesus was here. Jesus said at the point of our salvation, he says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone opens the door, I will come in. He is there inside you. And his voice, he doesn't have a voice of his own. He uses your voice. And when you open your mouth and you speak, to that mountain. The mountain can only hear the tonation, the diction of Jesus Christ speaking from you and that mountain in honor to Christ, in respect to Christ that dwells in you. That mountain will say, the Lord of heaven and earth is talking through that man, through that woman, I must go. 
that mountain must go. Yeah. When you speak to the mountain, and you're not speaking about the mountain, and you say, remove hands to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Yeah. Who is that you there? I said, who oh, is that you there? Actually, the Lord Jesus expects when he told you that, you will use the key that he has given you. You will open every door. Yeah. You remove every mountain. Yeah. Now, we're looking at the wonders of unwavering faith. Number one is the wonder of salvation. The wonder of salvation. In Romans chapter 10, and I'm reading from verse 8. What says it? The word is near you, even in thy mouth and in thine heart. That is the word of faith which will preach. The word of faith which will preach. Will preach it. You hear it. It's in your heart. You declare with your mouth. And because the word of faith is in your mouth, the wonder of salvation will happen in your life. Uh, look at this. Look at verse 9. It says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Look at that. God the Father raised up Jesus from the dead. It's a fact. It's not something we have to go and dig somewhere and try to prove it has happened. And if you will open your mouth and confess the fact, and tell the fact that you believe that for you, that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead, you confess that with your mouth, you are saved in Jesus' name. Look at verse 10. In verse 10, 4, where the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Number two is the wonder of healing for the sake. The wonder of healing for the sake. In Acts chapter 3, verse 16. In Acts chapter 3, verse 16, and his name through faith in his name. Faith in his name. When you have a good doctor that has clear, good record, a specialist, an expert, and people talk about him, oh, I was there. Look at what he did for me, what I've taken to many places, and the thing was not dealt with. He just looked at me and asked me a few questions and gave me this. That day, everything cleared. That one gives testimony, that one gives testimony, that one gives testimony. You have confidence and trust in such a doctor. That confidence is called faith. The name above every name. The name of Jesus Christ. See what he has done. He's done all things well. Because of that, what I heard about him, is done that for him, for her, for them, over there and over here. I must have faith in that name. That faith in the name of Jesus will heal you today if you are sick. If there is any kind of demonic oppression there, that name will clear that demon off from your life today in Jesus' name. And uh, his name, through faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know, yea, the faith which is by him has given him this perfect soundness, in the presence of you all. Once again, you are going to be well. 
you are going to be healthy. All the things that the Lord has called you to do, and it appears you are not able because of sickness, because of weakness, because of infirmity, because of imp impotence. Now, your day has come. Faith in that name, the wonder of faith in the name that he gives you healing and soundness, healing for every sickness. Number three, the wonder of sanctification. The wonder. Sanctification is a wonder. And there are people that don't even bother themselves. They say, I am man and I don't think... I can be holy because man cannot be holy. Man in himself with men, this is impossible. But when Christ the sanctifier, the purifier, the refiner, when Christ the reformer, when Christ the recreator, the one that creates us all over again, when it comes into you, I'm telling you that this day will be your day of sanctification. It tells us in Acts chapter 26, and I'm reading from verse 18. In Acts 26 verse 18, to open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God, that they might receive forgiveness of sins that's number one at salvation number two and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith not just by doctrine by faith not by denomination by faith not by gradual effort by faith sanctified by faith that is in me the lord will do it in your life it will sanctify you, purify you, purge you, and take away the truth that Adamic nature from your life in Jesus' name. Because if thou canst only believe all things, including sanctification, all things are possible for him who believes. We're looking at number four, and it's the wonder of steadfastness. Wonder of steadfastness. The same man is so weak, today is up, tomorrow he is down. They're thinking of man unaided, man without help, man without the fullness of the grace of God. But when Christ seats on the throne of your heart and is the one that makes all things possible wonder of wonders in your life you will not be up and down i will not be up and down you'll be steadfast in the lord in jesus name we're looking at Second Peter chapter three verse seventeen. Second Peter chapter three verse seventeen. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also be led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness. Steadfastness steadfastness your will be steadfast we see you in the morning and you're standing in the afternoon we come at you and you're still standing in the evening of life you will still be standing in jesus name you will not say good old days when i was much younger in the faith I could take on that, I could confront that, I could, I could stand before anything and every, anyone. But now, you know, as man gets older, and my faith is now wobbling, and my faith, my confidence is now shaking, you will not shake. As your day so shall your strength be. And that if 
God is still there. Underneath you are the everlasting arms. And he goes before you. And he calls behind you. He's the shield and the umbrella. The wings of an eagle above you. And he says, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And that your shoe shall be that of iron. And as your day, so shall your strength be. The wonder of steadfastness will remain in your life in Jesus' name. Number five is the wonder of supernatural strength. The wonder of supernatural strength. It tells us in Romans chapter 4, and we're reading from verse 16, supernatural strength. It says, therefore, it is of faith that it might be by grace to the end for the purpose the promise might be sure to all the seed, not to that only which is of the Lord, but to that also which is of the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all. Then in verse 17, as it is written, I have made thee a father of many nations before him whom he believed even God who quickness the dead God who quickness the dead anything everything that is dead in you will be quickened and made alive new life I said new life excited life a kind of life with divine supernatural strength that comes to you and it says he collect doses which be not as do the one in verse 18 it says so against hope believed in hope nothing hopeless in your life anymore the situation of that child in your family not hopeless anymore and the situation of your husband of your wife is not hopeless anymore you came here dejected you are going back home excited you came in here despair of life i said what am i living for again you are going back home full of zest and energy and the glory of god will be upon your life in jesus name because you are the one today that against hope you believe in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken so shall thy seed be verse 19 in verse 19 and be not weak in faith have you seen everything depends on faith once you can tell the Lord, Lord, I believe. And then you cancel that part of unreasonable unbelief. Once that is cleared away, Lord, I believe. Great things are about to happen in your life. All the things you've been running away from, I can't go there. I can't touch that one. I can't preach that. I can't pray like that. I can't move that way. All the rubbish of debris, everything cleared away from your side. Because now, being not weak in faith, you can see that not is somebody now dead. When he was about a hundred years old, he was about a hundred years old, and he didn't say, Centenarians don't do that. Hundred years of age, people don't do that. When you cross 18 and you cross 90, don't think about such a project. He said, No because of faith what other hundred year olds do not think about i'm planning to do those things i'm planning to go there i'm planning to explore that it will happen according to your faith 
when you are not calculating why are you calculating with the eternal he is from eternity and he doesn't know a hundred he doesn't know 120 years of age he doesn't know 130 years of age all he thinks about is that he has been from eternity and he's with you i said he's with you so you are not calculating I wish I thought about this at 35. Now I am 40. Uh -huh. I'm now 53. I wish I knew this when I was 45. That age does not count with God. What you were not able to do before, if God is bringing it back to you now and he says, possess the land, Conquer the land, evangelize the land, and go everywhere and be an achiever. Even if you're 100 years of age, the Lord will brush aside that age. And the strength of the eagle, and the might, and the power of the young one, the Lord will give unto you. Be not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. Look at verse 20. In verse 20, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief unbelief makes us to stagger we see the promise of god instead of focusing on that promise of god gazing at that promise of god was shifted because we're staggering like a drunken man we have drunk the water the wine of the world the wine of unbelief and because we have drunk the wine of unbelief made by unbelievers to entrench unbelief in the heart was tiger but abram said i'm not going to drink their wine i'm not going to have their opinion i'm not going to go through this is what happens to people when they live up to 100 their brains become weak their joints become stiff when they become a hundred, they cannot sit and stand. When they become a hundred, they forget, they forget. Abraham said, I will not drink their wine. You will not drink their wine. Yeah. You will remain strong. Yeah. You will remain powerful. He staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Look at verse 21. It says, I'm being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able also to perform. My God is able. Your God is able. Don't look at the negative side. Block all those things that bring doubt and unbelief away from your mind. Whatever, whatever, whatever you are asking him today, according to his promise, he cannot lie, he cannot relent. What he has promised is able to do in your life, he will do it. Number six is the wonder of saving succor, support, succor. That even if you're about to fall, a hand will come from heaven and pick you up. Yeah. Sometimes the devil says, I'll take him by surprise. He will not know when I come in and then he rushes in like a mighty flood. But the Spirit of God knows what the enemy is planning before he even gets to you. He'll raise up a mighty standard. He will stop that oppressor. Yeah. That evil one. They will not catch you. They will not blow you down. They will not destroy you. God has something for you to do, which no other man or woman in the world can do. He doesn't make redundant people. He doesn't make duplicates. He creates us unique. He created you unique. 
and in the courts of heaven in the books of in the book of life in heaven there is something god that's reaching that you and only you can do nobody can do it except you and because you have that unique position the lord is looking at you now and is looking at the record over there <laughs> He has done 20% of what I created him for. 80% still remains. And you will not die before that 80%. Yeah. Whatever is happening around you, whatever people say around you, you're so unique that the Lord is looking at that. It's done 30%. It remains 70%. What does he need? What grace, what strength, what power, what vision does he need so he can complete his assignment? That's why we're here. The Lord will give you the remaining strength. We're coming to that, number six now, in Matthew chapter 14, reading from verse 28, saving succor. We're looking at Matthew 14, verse 28, Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me come unto thee on the water. If it be thou, bid me come to thee on the water because you are my lord you are my extraordinary model and you are walking on the water i've been a fisherman before you called me and since i've been a fisherman i, I, I i've never never walked on the water and you called me so that I can replicate, reproduce what you do. If that's you, help me and tell me to come on the water. You know what was saying? That everything Christ can do, he also will do. The Christ that lives in you is not a failure. You will not be a failure. The Christ that lives in you, never one day discouraged, disheartened, I cannot. Those words were not in his dictionary. You are in the dictionary of the world. Cannot, will not, must not, I'm not able, I cannot stand, never. And what is not in Christ's dictionary will not be in your dictionary. Yeah. He can, you can. Yeah. He did, you will do. Yeah. If that's you, tell me to come on the water. And then in verse 29, it says in verse 29, and it said, come just one word that's enough for you i said one word is enough for you one word is enough to dry all your tears one word is enough to bring you out of the boat and get you on the sea one word calm and when peter was calm down out of the ship he walked on the water to go to Jesus. He did what Christ had done. Look at verse 30. In verse 30, but when he saw the wind boisterous. Now, what gives us unbelief when we take our, high, our eyes away from Christ and we put our eyes, our gaze on the wind? When we take our eyes away from the light of the world and we focus our attention on the darkness in the world. When we take our eyes away from the creator of the whole universe and then we pin our sight on the creatures in the world. He saw the wind boisterous. He was afraid and beginning to sink he cried, save, saying, Lord, 
save me. It will save you. The circle of those who are sinking in the ocean of life. Now, between me and Peter, I'm a small preacher, but all the same. Sometimes, small people can tell great people what they fail to realize. If I were to talk to Peter, I would have said, there's no way you can sing. God has written down in his book in heaven that you will preach on the day of Pentecost. All those things were known to God. What Peter will do, that Peter, a shadow, will be healing. The sick. God knew that ahead of time. He knew that Peter will raise Dorcas from the dead. That what Christ has done, this man Peter was going to do. And the devil doesn't have the power, the authority, over Peter to make him sink. The devil doesn't have the authority, the power to make you sink. Yeah. All those things you are going to do that have been written down, you must do them. Another person is not going to take your place. Another person is not going to do that. And so, Peter, don't look at the wind. They mean nothing. Don't look at your difficulties. They mean nothing. But then he cried, Lord, save me. Do you see how God answers short prayers? Great problem. Great sea, deep sea, and the man was sinking, and you will think that he needs a long winding prayer to get him out. A prayer of three words. Today, God will answer. Yeah. Lord, save me. He has saved you. Yeah. He has delivered you. Underneath you will be the everlasting arms in Jesus' name. Look at verse, 40, verse 31. In verse 31, and immediately, Christ does not waste any time. When it concerns somebody he has chosen to do the extraordinary, you are the man, you are the woman today. That's why you are here. You didn't just come by yourself. The Lord sent you here for me to tell you that you are unique and special in the hand of God. He will not play with your life. He will not joke with your life. Everything that concerns you because of his calling upon your life is three letter, three word prayer will rescue you. Immediately Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, O thou of little faith. Doesn't that discourage you? No. Little faith. The man walked on water on the basis of little faith. If you tell me your faith is little, I say praise the Lord, then you can walk on water. I said you can walk on your water. Little faith. O thou of little faith, wherefore didst thou doubt? The promise of God is not our problem. It's the doubt that is our problem. The greatness of the challenge is not the problem. It's the doubt that is the problem others have never done it and i'm doing it that's not the problem your doubt is the problem wherefore didst thou doubt you will not doubt you will not doubt your god you will not doubt christ our savior you will not doubt his calling upon your life you will not doubt his power in your life and then verse 32 in verse 32 and when they were come into the ship now jesus did not put peter 
at the back and carried him to the ship. He pulled him up. He said, stand on the water. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And then he got on the water and he did it. You will do it. It's not that you know somebody will carry you at the back. You are not impotent. You are not powerless. Lord, I can. Lord, I will. Lord, I must. And the wind ceased. That wind will not continue forever. That storm will not continue forever. Number seven, the wonder of the sacred scripture. The wonder of the sacred scripture. Luke chapter 24, I'm reading from verse 25. It says, Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Verse 26, Then opened ought not Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory verse 27 and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded unto them all the scriptures the things concerning himself he expounded unto them the things concerning himself. How do you live the victorious life? The life of faith. The life that cannot be denied. Check off from the scriptures the things written concerning you. Oh, you say, is my name there? Not your literal name. Your name as a believer. If you're a believer, check up. What things are written concerning the believer? If you're a follower of Christ, your name is follower of Christ. Check up the things that are written concerning you. If you're a saint of God, a servant of God, the things that are written concerning the saints and the servants of God, check up the things that are written concerning you. If you just read the Bible, I read the Bible through every year. Good, good, good. But did you ever check up the things that are written concerning you? That's a secret of having the victory all the time he expounded unto them in all the scriptures the things concerning himself and then he tells us in verse 45 verse 45 then opened he their understanding that they might understand the scriptures I pray the spirit of understanding will come upon you afresh today in Jesus name I'm coming now to number two number two the withering paucity the paucity that's poverty of people with unreasonable unbelief it says in Mark chapter 9 Verse 24, look at that last line. Help thou mine unbelief. What you claim as yours, it's yours. Some people say, my sickness, that's what you are claiming. Some people say, my enemies, that's what you are claiming. Some people say, my unbelief. That's what they claim. But the man, instead of looking at Christ alone and saying, Lord, I believe. He now said, but Lord, I also have another thing inside me here. My unbelief that I possess. You will not have unbelief. Yeah. You will not brag about your unbelief. Yeah. You will not say, I'm a difficult fellow. I don't always believe. I am a simple person. I believe what Christ has said. 
I believe what my God has said and what he has said will be fulfilled in your life in Jesus name unbelief is unreasonable when I see God open the Red Sea for three million people to pass over unbelief becomes unreasonable when I see people that went around the Jericho walls and all the walls came down flat, unbelief becomes unreasonable. When I see Christ who died and was buried and the third day according to what he said rose up triumphantly, Unbelief becomes unreasonable. When I see God fulfilling his promise for the sick, for the, demon, for the demonized, and for the needy, unbelief then becomes unreasonable. And it is the unbelief that withers and dries up our lives. The withering poverty, poverty of People with unreasonable unbelief. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the grim condition of lives in unbelief. Number two, the great cost and loss of unbelief. Number three, the grieving, grievous condemnation for lost in unbelief number one number one is the grim condition of lives in unbelief matthew chapter 13 reading from verse 54 and when he was come into his own country he taught them in their synagogues it's so much that they were astonished and said whence has this man this wisdom and these mighty works verse 55 is not this the carpenter's son we're looking at the physical, not at the spiritual. It's not his mother called Mary and his brethren James and Joseph and Simon and Judas. Verse 56, it says, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Whence then has this man all these things? Verse 57, it says, and they were offended in him. But Jesus said unto them, A prophet is not without honor, save except in his own country and in his own house. Verse 58, And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. The power was there. The power that can recreate the whole universe. The power was there to do many mighty works, but because of their unbelief, they put themselves in a grim condition. Look at number two. Number two, the great cost and loss of unbelief. We're looking at Hebrews chapter 4, reading from verse 1. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. It says, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise be left us of entering in into his rest. Any of you should seem to come short of it. Verse 2 says, in verse 2, for unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. But the word preached did not profit them. That's the cost of unbelief. That the loss of unbelief. The word preached did not profit them, not be mixed to a faith in them that had it. They wasted their time hearing because the word did not mix with faith. In all those people, they had settled unbelief. Your heart will not be like that. Amen. We're looking at number three there. Number three there is a grieving, grievous condemnation 
for lost in unbelief. It tells us in Hebrews chapter 3, verses 18 and 19. Hebrews chapter 3, we're looking at verse 18. And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not. God had a purpose. Take them out of Egypt, out of the land of bondage, and take them to the promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. God had a good intention for them, a good purpose for them, a good destiny for them. He wanted to take them to that place of joy and that place of total provision, sufficient provision, abundant provision, but they believed not. And because they believed not, here is the condemnation, here is the consequence of that kind of life. And then in verse 19, it says, so we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. I will enter in. Amen. Say that again. Amen. Everything, every good thing, promised land that the Lord has marked for me. And he has given you a place there, a seat there, an assignment there. Every place the Lord has prepared for you in the promised land, even in this world, and then in the world to come, you will enter in. Amen unbelief will not hinder you. The power of the Lord will protect you. The power of the Lord will preserve you. Unbelief has to go. From my heart, from my mind, from my thinking, from my spirit, unbelief has to go. And I will in time. Welcome. I welcome you to the promised land. Yeah. Nothing will stand in your way. Yeah. The faith to have, the faith to possess, you'll have in Jesus' name. Yeah. I come to point number three now. Point number three, the wonder walking power in the performance of unconquerable faith unconquerable faith three things we're looking at number one all things are possible by faith number two all tests trials are passable by faith number three all truths are practicable by faith or I said all. Oh. I said all. Oh. Look at number one. All things are possible by faith. All things are possible by faith. Mark chapter 9 verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. Look at that. If you can believe, and your age doesn't count, too young, too old, and your gender doesn't mind, a man, a woman, and your education does not count, literate, illiterate, and your tribe does not count, Nigerian, American, all things are possible, to him that believeth. Now, what do I do so that all things are possible for me? Since I know it's on the count of faith, I stand guard at the door and I see a thought coming. I say, don't come in yet. A thought of faith or a thought of unbelief, it's a thought of unbelief. No space, no chance for you here. Go away. An idea is coming. 
I stand guard at the door. Now, I dare tell me the name of your parents, idea of superstition, idea of history, idea of impossibility. No, no time for you, no chance for you here. Go back. I see an idea and I see a policy coming. And the policy, I say, hold on, hold on. I'm standing guard here. It's a policy of unbelief. Our parents did not have that. Our parents did not enjoy that. Our denomination never thought of that before I said policy. The policy of unbelief go away. I only allow the word of faith, the principle of faith, the power of faith, and the statement of faith to enter into me. If you will stand on guard like that and Every thought, every idea that wants to come in and be resident in your heart, you examine first. Is it a thought, an idea, a policy, a statement of faith? Then come in and your faith is increasing every day. It says all things are possible to you because you believe. And from today, all things are possible. What if that unbelief already entered into me? I learned something long ago that if you put your hand in a bandage and you hang it up, you don't use it. You leave it like that. By the time you remove that bandage, the hand is stiff because what you don't use, you lose. So if that unbelief is there, I'll never pay attention to the unbelief. I'll starve that unbelief to death. I'll hang it there with a bandage. And what I don't use, I lose. If you don't use your unbelief, if you don't give voice to your unbelief, if you don't walk on your unbelief, you will lose that unbelief. I didn't hear you, I am. Yeah. Good readers, good readers. The unbelief eventually got angry because I will not use it and it's gone. And I say, Faith, you have all of my heart, all of the space there because that faith now can be exercised. All things are possible for you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Number two, number two, all tests, all trials are passable by faith. You will pass all your tests. Yeah. You will pass all your trials because you have faith in God. In Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27, Hebrews chapter 11 verse 27, by faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured uh, seeing him who is invisible. Now, all of us know and of all of us believe that God is everywhere with every person. God is everywhere with every person. That's what Moses believed. God was invisible unto him as he is invisible unto you. But he knew that God is with me here. I am going to Pharaoh. God is with me there. I am going now on my way to the Red Sea and God is with me there. I am at the shore of the Red Sea and God is with me here. And before the mountain I want to bring out water and God is with me here and Joshua is a fighting on the battlefield and I raise up the rod of God and God is with me there he practiced the presence of God he knew that the mighty God and the mighty God that never lost any battle he knew that that God was with him everywhere and he endured a seen him who is invisible and when you live like that every difficulty will clear out of your way that red sea will not swallow you up 
will not drown you. You're going to the promised land, and that dry rock will bring water when you need water. Now you will pass every test, every trial in your life in Jesus' name. I come to number three. All truths are practicable by faith. If I could not do it, Christ will not tell me to do it. He is the heavenly teacher. And he doesn't tell any of his servants, any of his students, any of the sons, the children of God to do what they could not do. If he brought that truth to you, he knew you could practice it, you could do it. And when you look at Christ like that, the reasonable teacher, the supernatural teacher and the teacher that cannot bring any truth to you which you cannot practice you know what he has told you you will do Amen. you will walk in the truth and you will walk by the truth and nothing 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 impossible will confront you in your life in jesus name First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13. In First Thessalonians chapter 2, reading there from verse 13, for this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when ye received the word of God, ye received the word of God, ye received the word of God. Ye received ye which ye had of us. Ye received it not at the word of men, but as it is in truth. As it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. In you that believe. Everything you have heard today, and you accept and you receive at the word of God will begin to walk effectually, effectively, wonderfully, powerfully in your life in Jesus' name. The past is gone. The past failure is gone. Impossibilities, gone. I cannot, gone. Our people never did anything like that before. All that is gone. Yeah. A new man. Yeah. A new woman. Yeah. A man, a woman of faith. Yeah. You see life now in a bright way and the darkness and the dimness of unbelief of the past, everything is now gone. Yeah. The word you receive today will work effectually in you. Amen. All things are possible to you Amen. because you believe. Amen. Rise up and express your faith, your trust, your confidence to the God of heaven. Lord, I believe. Lord, I believe. Everything you have heard will work unhindered, unsuppressed in your life. Lord, I believe all things are possible. Thanks for watching Revival Time Hub. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if any be a hearer of the word, and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself, and goeth his way, and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he was.